I need you guys to understand that. All right? Try to utilize your time more. So for instance, by you waking up earlier, right? You can get in another training session, right? And therefore you don't have to stay out later and then you can focus on actually things that you might be weak on to improve your game. So right now, to begin, we're gonna start running. We're gonna start our mornings because I need to make sure, because if you guys are on any sport team, you have to be able to have stamina and run because you don't want to be that person on the bench that doesn't work as hard and doesn't understand, shoot, why I can't be in the front of the line because they're in the back of the line because they don't put as much effort. You guys ready to roll soon? Yeah. Cool. So breakfast, definitely is going to have to be before, so like 8.30, 8 o'clock. So 9 o'clock when we come, I want to be able to work out. Every day we're going to have a marathon of cardio where you're going to feel like you're going to want to stop, but you're going to find it deep down in yourself why you need to keep going. You guys with me? But you have to understand, as a coach, as a parent, it doesn't matter who it is in your corner. We can't bring that out of you. That's something that you have to dig deep inside and realize, okay, you know why I'm doing this is because I believe I can do this and I can keep going. So, um, now, Just wanna come to the A no, 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 no. I got time for you. Anytime I ask you guys a question, yes coach or no coach. Do you understand that? Yes coach. Uh-uh, you didn't understand that. Do you understand that? Yes coach. Great, now we're on the same page. So we're gonna do our dynamic stretch from here, starting right here. I'm gonna show, let me put everything that I need out of the way. And we're gonna do this together. Come, let's go. Yeah, are you ready? Yeah, Shoelaces are tied. Get your hands out your pockets. Ready to roll? All right, let's go. Left foot, right here. Left foot. Left foot. We're going to do that twice. Right foot on the bottom. Out. Now the key is not about to get as much as we can on the back. Yep. Right now, you guys are going to run. And I'm gonna time you. We're literally gonna see who's gonna outrun the other, who has more stamina, all right? So, this is the starting point, right? Right here. You guys are gonna be running around the 400 meter track, right? As long as you can, we're working on our stamina. So make sure you don't focus on trying to outrun each other because it's not about speed. It's about how long you can last, all right? So run at a consistent pace because what happens is someone's gonna wanna stop. So what I wanna see is who can get more laps than the other. Does that make sense? Let's go. Homies that are under me trying to take over While I'ma stay high while they can stay lower The young and just, just, just got older They can't have my service cause I'm out of order Cause when I rap, homies know it's just game over Wearing all black like my name was Tova Bread pops up my pocket like a toaster If you're trying to cook beef, then I'm a roaster Roaster Huh? Your whole leg, right? It's stiffening it up, it's cramping it up, right? But where's your heart? Is your heart hurt? So I always remember, look at coach, look at coach. You're doing great. You never gave up. You kept going until you can't go. And guess what? Now your legs hurt a little bit, right? You could choose to stop or you could choose to keep going. How you choose to keep going matters about everything. Because right here is a breaking point. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get right back into that race. We're not gonna give up, right? We're gonna slowly, gradually, right? get into it and then if you can pick up the speed you pick up the speed and if you can't it's okay because you know what matters most you did your best right do you believe that though if you don't believe that then we have to go back out there because you know why because when you do your best even if you don't make it you can be happy with the results because you know you gave it your all and I can be happy as a coach knowing that you gave it your all all right let's go baby tie your shoelace tie your shoelace we're gonna go together see quitting He's out there and he ain't quitting. Do it. No, 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 we don't do that. We're gonna win, we're gonna walk away through it. And then we're gonna pick up and then we're gonna start running. It's a mindset, baby. You see, this is you. It's a racial world, but it's not bigger than you. Can go.
I'm proud of you because you've been able to push through the pressure points and it's showing that you're getting stronger. Muhammad, I'm even more proud of you because you didn't give up even when you wanted to stop. It's so easy to stop. And even when you did stop for that second, you decided to keep going. That shows character. The right mindset is saying to yourself, right? My body has limits, but my mind does not. Repeat that for me. My body has limits, but my mind does not. So don't put a limit on yourself because of what your body can't do yet. Yet. Let's go. Let's go, Mohammed. Don't give up. Don't give up. Way not to give up. That's how you do it, baby. That's how you do it. Finish strong. Good job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Drink your water. Hey. I'm gonna tell you real quick. What you did right is you finished. What you're doing wrong is your attitude looking at how you're finishing. You're putting too much pressure and expectation. Look at me, dude. Eye contact. Eye contact. You're putting too much, breathe into your nose, out to your mouth. You're putting too much pressure on yourself for no reason. You have to be proud, understanding every day you're doing your best. It's not about winning. Life's not about winning. There's gonna be people who are gonna get things that you want and you don't have right away. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get it. Does that make sense? No, yes what? Coach. No, yes what? Oh, yes coach. Exactly. Hey dad. Eye contact please. So when you understand that, right, you have to look at it in this way. Okay, you know what? Am I with people who care for me just like my family? Yes. Can I call my pops and my mom at any given time that I need to? Yes. So therefore, now you have that peace of mind knowing, you know what? I'm away from my family. This is kind of too much for me and I have to adjust. I can understand it's too much for everybody. This is what life's about, new experiences and being able to be strong enough to do things on your own. Shoot, kids doing what they need to be doing. Obviously, you have one kid feeling like he wants to go home, homesick, which is very understandable, and I can relate. Regarding with Quentin, right, um, he's been phenomenal in terms of not giving up. He understands what needs to be done, right, and he's picking things up very quickly. However, he still has areas that he needs to work on, which I'm finding in terms of his communication and understanding how to communicate with his peers a lot better. So we'll work on that. This was only the morning. This was the first rodeo. So like Nipsey Hussle, it's a marathon, right? Murder half of your bros. 16 bars, only need half of that for these oh. filter the real shh. Cause half the rappers you know, man, you gon' need exorcisms. I'm attacking they soul. Whoa. Stay low, stay low. Yeah. The dribble has to be in the key. Eyes up. Sweet. Be in the key, yup. Yeah. Sweet. You're doing it. Twist those hips. 
It takes time, but with every day, you will get better. If you don't do it, you won't get better. Can you go water break it up? After you're done, yes. I'll tell you when you can get water. So I'm gonna give you guys 45 seconds to complete 100, so no excuse. You guys know you guys can pass it and you know you can do it. If we don't, uh, we have to do it again? Yeah, just like washing dishes. So if you don't wanna wash the dishes again, make sure you do it right the first time, right? Yes, coach, coach. Uh-oh, I got one MVP, who's my next, who's my second? Yes, coach. Starting in three. Two, one, go. We ain't going away. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Come on. Come on. Heels up. Heels up. Heels up. Don't move. Heels up. There we go. There we go. Work, baby. Don't let those heels touch the floor. Don't let them touch the grass. Come on. Touch the floor. Pound, baby. Pound. Pound. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, you're almost done, you're almost done. 15 seconds left. Let's go, 14, 13, 12, 11, don't give up, you're doing great. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, I'm proud of you baby, keep it up. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You gotta get them up, full extent. It's a short distance. Alright, get them up. Let's go. Run at your own pace. You don't have to catch him, you just have to maintain. Okay. Right now the kids, they're doing their morning run, trying to get their stamina up because they realize they don't want to get tired while they're playing. So in order to do that, I want them to do a 12 minute run real quick. Normally that 12 minute run is for high school kids. But at the end of the day, I feel like if the kid's mindset is ready for it, why not put him to the test? A lot of progress in Muhammad and Quinton. Quinton, he's realizing that he has to keep going and he wants to do better. Muhammad is realizing, basically, it's a hard challenge getting up in the morning, training, doing what you love to do. But the best part about it is that he's doing it and he's understanding that on his own with the support of coach. The only reason why I think he's struggling right now is because it's a change of scenery and what happens is to any normal human being, when they go into an environment they're not used to, right, they have to adjust. So right now, he's just in the stages of adjusting. However, I feel like he's gonna be fine because in the afternoon, when it comes down to like actual gameplay and stuff, he performs exceptionally well. So right now, it's just getting him comfortable doing what he doesn't like to do and understanding why it needs to be done. How do you feel today? I feel like it's gonna be a great day because I started out good. I did, I've done 10 laps and I pushed myself to my limit and now I know that I can do that uh, when I go play basketball. How do you feel today, Mo? Good. What are your thoughts so far? Good. My thoughts are good. How do you feel about this morning and the run so far? Good. Just good? Yeah. What's going on? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. Why? Good job. Bananas. <laughs> you gotta be ready. Wait for the whistle. You're gonna give up? You're gonna give up? That's your excuse? That's your excuse? Hear me out. What's the excuse? So why'd you stop? Because that's why there's a reason why you stopped. Yes, you should I thought you didn't say the You you thought. So whose fault was that? 
I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. Okay, but you have to understand something. When you don't finish the race, even though you didn't start the way you wanted to start, it doesn't help. Look at me, please, when I'm speaking to you. It doesn't help the situation. Right now, we're here to help you get better, correct? Yes or no? Guess what? No, no, guess what? That's true. Thank you. So when it comes down to it, I need you to understand something. Even though you didn't start the way you wanted to start, it doesn't mean you couldn't finish strong. You just wasted a lap because of your thought process. Because, oh, shucks, I thought coach was going to say bananas again. That's not my fault. You know, sometimes in a real race, look at me, please, when I'm speaking to you, because we're not done. In a real race, you're going to hide a gun. That gun's going to be like this for God knows how long. You're going to be waiting, and you're going to be waiting. And you know what sound you're waiting for? For it to go off, to be ready. This is what you call preparation. Yesterday, we had to be prepared. Today's word of the day is self-control. So you're going to have to learn how to control your emotions. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes what? Yes, coach. Good job, Quentin. Quentin's up one. The game ain't over. The game's not over. This is the last one, the last rodeo. You choose. That was close. Tie game. That was really close. Good job, Mohammed. Good job. Right now, we're working on our footwork and our ball handling. It's our afternoon sessions, and the kids, obviously the heat, the sun is getting to them, so I'm making sure they're not getting dehydrated, so we have lots of water. We're in the shade, they're having a two minute break, and I feel like they're understanding the concepts. So right now, let's line up. One person on this side of the pole, the other person on that side of the pole, and we're gonna work on our defense. Let's go, kiddo, you're doing great. Sprint, full speed, close out at the foul line. And then back pedal. Close up, one, two, three, four. Back pedal, let's go. In, yep. Three, two, one. Good job, back pedal, back pedal, back pedal. Finish strong. We got one more. Uh-oh, whoever makes this might be hitting me in the middle of the whole thing. Thanks, Paula. You gotta tie the game, this is your last shot, Mohammed. Give me that! Give me that! You froze! What are you doing? You don't want to shoot. Good D. Good D. Oh, he's complaining now. Oh, yes, what? You're going to quit? You're going to quit? You're going to walk away? No, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Ref didn't give you the call. You're going to get teed up? You're going to get teed up? You're going to get teed up? Are you going to get teed up? You're gonna play to other people? Okay. So you're gonna play to hurt? Or you're gonna play to win? Now stop the play. Take a deep breath, mindfulness, breathe, and understand the state of mind you're in and understand what's gonna happen if you carry on in this state of mind. Please. Hello? I'm gonna hurt someone else. Sorry? I'm gonna hurt someone else. You hurt someone else, which means you're a danger to the game, which means you won't be allowed to play. Right now you lost your cool. You're literally trying to hurt him because you I'm thought, not. listen to me, don't speak. Eye contact. This is the championship. All season long, you've been working hard. You're going to get kicked out of the championship game because you got fouled? Talk to yourself. Listen to yourself. Ask yourself, how does that really feel? Because that's what matters the most, kiddo. It's how you feel. No, you keep looking at the wall. I know you're frustrated. Your, your emotions are up. You're playing a game. I feel the same way. Coach is on the sideline looking at you like one of the best players. He's looking at Quentin too. Quentin, come here, please. 
I didn't forget about you. I know you're not hurt, and I'm not mad at you because I know you didn't deliberately try to hurt him. You're trying to win the game, correct? Everyone's trying to win the game, but not everyone wins because of little things like this. You see DeMarcus Cousins? You know that player? You know that player? He's known for getting too many technicals because he loses his cool. No composure. She said I'm a triple, honey, welcome to Trivago. Tell me who you know, who is you tripping for a follow? But all in the air like Showtime and the Apollo. Puffing up your chest, the next thing you know is hollow, but well, hello. I've been swinging like some jello. You got one of the fun guy, he gets some portobello. So I guess I need some grease up on my elbow. Yeah. But now my light turned yellow. And I've been looking for a cheat code. Life don't come in a neat bowl, bringing the receipt home. You guys ready to roll? All right, cool, let's roll. Remember, you showed up. A lot of people are still in bed right now, sleeping, wondering, oh, you know what, I'll just go to the court later on at 12, thinking they have an opportunity to go to the places you're trying to go. But then there's kids just like you out here at your age that are ready to put in the work and outwork everybody. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Keep your feet together. Slightly bend your knees. If you could just do this nice and easy, you can skip nice and easy. Eliminated that and I became limitless Defy the odds, push it far beyond what limit is See my spirit is just unlimited Only the grace can witness it Challenges have forced me to be greater Take a minute <laughs> Yeah <laughs> I'm trying to be serious I'm trying to be serious right now now they're learning their weaknesses and their strengths and they're understanding how they can utilize it against each other and put it into the gameplay and apply that to other situations that they're going to be facing in the near future.
She got a sweep. She got a sweep. Not at, not at her knees, at her ankles. Sweep. A little bit quicker. Good job. Left hand here, that's one. Right over here, that's two. Come over here again, that's three. Your goal is, if you really think you're that good, you gotta make 10 in a row. Then once you make 10 in a row from there, you're gonna move up to here and you're gonna shoot. Make 10 in a row. Have discipline to not miss. You wanna train by yourself, this is how it looks. You ain't gotta worry about nothing, the camera ain't on you, buddy. Good, so focus. Focus, let's go, follow through. If you're gonna work out by yourself, you might as well work out correctly, not the wrong way. My name is Mohammed Kamara and I'm 12 years old. My name is Quentin Whitaker and I'm 11 years old. I started playing basketball because my older brothers started playing basketball and it inspired me to play basketball. I actually forget why I started playing basketball. I was in a foster care family and it was the only other thing to do at the house other than playing video games. Being away from family, um, the first couple days, it made me sad. But then I got over it and I learned how to man up. So now I'm, I'm fine. I've been doing well so far with not giving up and pushing myself to the limits. When I lost to Quinton, uh, he beat me once, I think. A couple times. A couple times. And, but he never beat me the rest of the thing. So it felt good because I never, like against Quinton, I never like felt a loss on the court. And I, like the first time he beat me, I took it personal, but then now I, I learned from my, my mistakes. I've been beating Muhammad in running with my stamina, and he's been beating me in basketball games. And I think the benefit of that is that we could learn from each other. He could teach me his skills on basketball, and I could teach him my skills with, with stamina. The thing that was going through my mind when I was running, the first day, um, I thought it was all about winning. If I didn't win, I would take it personal. I would just get mad. But now, like, I'm running my own race and I, I'm getting better by doing, I'm running my own race. Because if I mind what, what's Quentin doing, then I'm not getting better. I think Coach Hermie is a great guy and I love his coaching style. He pushes me to the limit and he always inspires me. My thoughts on Coach Remy and his coaching style, I love it and he pushes people to the limit. That's why I, I like him as a coach because not many, not many kids, like, they don't get pushed to the limit, and Remy does that to other kids. And he encourages people to keep on playing, keep on moving. We're out here in Stratford trying to impact the kids in a positive way during all this crisis that's going on. And we're trying to teach them character and self-improvement through a character development program using basketball and fitness as a tool for them to stay in shape. The strengths I see in Quinton doesn't quit. He likes to listen, right? He's willing to put in the work. His weaknesses is, is intimidation in terms of Muhammad, right? I realize he's very talented, right? He's been listening. He knows how to do the drills. The difference is his weaknesses. He just doesn't want, and, and it's hard for him to understand of like, why do I have to do all this hard work when I'm already talented? To be honest, I learned as a coach, you have to be patient. You see kids, you can't expect them to catch on to things right away. Parents, you know what I mean? We expect them to because we keep repeating ourselves, repeating ourselves. I know at times we do set the example and we do show the example and we do make mistakes. I realize sometimes as a coach, you're unaware that you might be pushy or your tone and how someone is receiving the direct message you're trying to give to them. Because sometimes coaches speak indirectly by not paying attention, and I don't think that's what coaches should do. I think sometimes coaches should give the kids a space, right? Give them the opportunity to come back, and if they're willing to put in the work, then you can show them how to make up for all those mistakes that they've done, instead of closing the door, never giving that kid an opportunity to keep moving forward. 
as a kid, I had coaches who I really believed in me who failed me. And, and to be honest, I realized a long time ago, you know what, no one's perfect. They're trying to do the best that they can, but there's different ways of how to go through it. So I realized if I approach the game right in a different perspective with a different manner, you get better results. So I like to make sure through basketball and fitness, I use these tools for self-improvement and personal growth for all the youth. What makes me happy? To be honest, I'm already happy, but what, what, what would make me even happier is knowing that these kids can keep up on their own routine by themselves. Because when parents come and let me know and give me the feedback that their child is doing it, and then when I say, hey, give your parents respect, yes, coach, no coach, yes, dad, no dad, yes, mom, no mom, right? The same thing channels from off the court and on the court. So as long as I see them practice what they preach on the court and off the court, I'm a happy coach because I'm pretty much sure they're going to be just right in life, where they can live the life that they intend. Now we're in my hometown, Toronto, Ontario, where we won't be moving on with Mo, unfortunately, because what happened in Stratford, he didn't open up truthfully to coach when I was asking him if anything was uncomfortable or if there's anything I could do to accommodate to make things easy. He told me everything was fine, but I guess for his parents, he told something else. So then they felt, you know what, just bring back Mo and he won't continue with the doc, unfortunately. We replaced him with Jaden, right, which happens to be Quentin's older brother, right? They both come from an adoptive family background, right? So what we're trying to do here is basically not shape and mold them, but help improve their current mental and physical performance. I brought them to Toronto and we're going to head over to Underpass um, Court where they have a basketball court underneath the highway because anytime the weather, like as of today, when it's rainy, right, guys can still be able to utilize their environment. Honestly, looking forward to seeing the new dynamic that happens between the brothers, because at the end of the day, you have the oldest brother who knows a little bit more, and then you have the younger brother who always feels like they might have to prove to themselves. Right now, we're in my hometown, Parkdale, where I'm from, where I was raised up, where I represent, love them. Shout out to my Parkdale community. When it comes down to it, on my wall, I have all these things, so when my mind's not in the proper state of mind, it reminds me of how I want to be. So when I was 19, it was the first time I actually got on the front page of a newspaper, The Villager, right? Friday, October 23rd, 2009, right? For me powering the youths through the future about how I impact them. So since then, I've been trying to continue on that path and had the youth as my main focus. What kind of boosts me up is seeing my trophy case from top to bottom. This is my big bro, kind of lost him last year, you know what I mean? However, he keeps driving me forward and I know he's watching all over us, so I, pre I appreciate him, I love him, and he's always in my chest. So he keeps me motivated, and this is what happened throughout my high school career. One of the purpose of my life is my brother and my mother. My father's present in my life, but because I was raised with my brother and my mother and my mom was a single mom raising two sons, I had to look at my older brother for guidance for certain things. So he took and he sacrificed to make me the man that I am today as well, as, as well as my mom. So I give them both props and I love them both. So shout out to both of them, Shannon and my mom. Through the disciplines of not listening, because I am hard headed and I am stubborn, even to this day, you know what I mean? I appreciate them for taking the time and understanding me and letting me grow into the person that I wanted to be. You see, without them, I wouldn't be able to actually look at things the way that I look at in a different way. But when it comes down to it, right, I want Quentin and Jay to understand like, yo, no matter what happens, you're never going to leave your brother behind. So make sure you're always in a threat position. All right, so we're going to pound the ball right up to our shoulders. All right, see my bum? Is it too high? Let me get it lower. Now, am I perfect? All right, that's how I want you guys to be. In three, get ready, triple threat. Two, one, go.
We have to correct our current state of mind. Let's just say you missed your first shot. Then you had a turnover. Then you let the guy score on you on defense. Coach is looking at you like, yo, what's up? What are you gonna do? Game time. Force him to shoot. Don't get blown by. Alright? If he's too fast for you, he's gonna be arm's length in the way. So if he drives in, you can still give him space. now just how you guys are resting this is what coaches do and this is what elite players do they realize okay he's tired because look how he's breathing right now okay Smart. now all I have to do is keep running that's how they beat you little things like that eye contact so the next time you guys face each other you're gonna use your advantages right you might be small but you're quicker than him you might be tall right and you might not be as fast as him but you know you can jump higher correct Yeah, boy. Ready. Remember to run past us. Go. Right now you're beating him because you're outworking him. Come on, Jay. You're the oldest one. Set an example. Go. Jeez, he took it again. All right. So the first 10 seconds, you want to... Give your best. Does that make sense? Yes, coach. The next 10 seconds, you want to maintain your best. 
Does that make sense? And then the last 10 seconds, you want to give it all you got. I'm going to give it all I got, all I got. Like 23, I stay on top, stay on top. I do it like it's my last shot, my last shot. We're grinding every day, ain't no other way. There we go. No worries. Happy birthday. I'm proud. At the end of the day, I just want you guys to keep working hard, keep representing where you're from and never give up on yourself because that's what life's about. You know what I mean? Believing in yourself, never giving up, and doing the best that you can because results will happen. Hey! Hey! That's how you feel? Okay, that's the dancing. That's your busting. Okay, you're busting. Okay, okay, busting. Hey! Ah! Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut the tape. Finish strong. Tight, tight, tight. Let's go. Tight, tight. One dribble cross. One dribble cross. Nice and tight. Straight down the middle, let's go. Good job. You gotta put that ball in. Come on, let's go. You can do it. You're gonna go, stop. When I blow the whistle, you're gonna stop. You're gonna do fire steps, just like that. When I say go, you're gonna keep going. Try to tell me there was no way, so I had to move my own way. While we got and got a had a lot of my mind. Look how much space I just created. Does that make sense? Now you know how to get someone off you. You gotta create that space, that separation. This is a pivot. You guys know how to pivot. Jab. Make sense? All right, let's use it. Let's go. Five, four, three. Get that ball. Get that ball. Get that ball. Shut him down. Hands up. Hands up. Ooh, good move. Good finish. Yeah, Jay. Show some pride. How old are you? How old are you? Alright, let's done it. Right here. And then we can get That's how you do it. End of the game. Finish that. It's done now. Touch the five. Both of you guys put your hands on it. Alright. This shot, five bucks. One shot. One free throw. It's a free throw. Free throw? One what free if we throw. Both make it? One free, if you both make it, you go till you miss. Let's okay. go. One free throw. For Five dollars. Let's go. Yeah.
Your turn. There you go, boy. Come get your money. Come get your money. Tell me why you won that. Let's go. Uh, I focused on just my shooting, nothing else. Told myself, get it in, get it in, and went in. Quentin, as you know, right, NJ, it's, today's our last day. You guys are in Toronto. I'm very proud of the progress that you guys have been doing during the whole duration of our training development. When it comes down to it, I want you to always know something, right? I'm always going to be proud of you even when you fail, even when you don't do your best. You had certain weaknesses, right? I don't really like using that term weaknesses. I like using what we need to work on, what we need to improve on. So terminology, how we speak to each other is everything. So always, because I'm not always going to be here. You guys are always going to be in each other's life. So I want you to understand something, right? Always look out for one another the same way how you know I'm always looking out for you. Because if you apply that heart with that same vision, right, you'll be able to go wherever you want to go. Sometimes you have to do what it takes. Sometimes we don't know what it takes. Right, I'm proud of you guys. Let's go. Hard on three. Bring it up. Yeah. One, two. The world is hard. And That's they say that the good is lost. Greed is the God. Later, right? And they will kill at any cost. But I will stand. I will go and beat the odds. Return to peace. In order, I'm a demigod. I am vengeance. I am the law. I am an army. My name is Jaden Atlee Whitaker. And I am 14 years old. My name is Quentin Atlee Whitaker and I am 12 years old. I started playing basketball because I was inspired by my older brother Andrew who played a lot. It's a way to get my, all my energy out because I have ADHD and then I'm very energetic so then I don't always need to take the pills anymore because I get out and energize. Well, changing from with Muhammad, the competition, to Jaden, it's been kind of complicated because Muhammad was like the same size as me and now Jaden's bigger than me, which forces me to do more moves. And it just makes it like overall harder to play against him. My current weaknesses are um, just posture and keeping my butt low in the squat position and making sure I don't look down all the time because that just makes other people think I'm down. I need to work on my form a bit and um, when I'm playing, I need to play a bit closer defense. My biggest weakness is probably driving in on Jaden because um, I usually am used to using the same few moves, but then Jaden's caught on to that. And now I'm like forced to do more moves, which is complicated for me. My biggest strengths are that I'm taller than most people and I'm able to get this to the net and score and I can body them. My biggest strength is my speed because I'm able to blow by him sometimes when he overplays me and get the free layup. The difference between Stratford and Toronto is that Toronto is more big and widespread and there's more things to explore. And Stratford you can easily get to know and then you just know your way around every, everywhere. The big difference between Stratford and Toronto is the, just the whole environment. In Stratford it's nice and calm and like there's not as many traffic and cars, but in Toronto there's cars everywhere and like it's hard, there's like so much traffic and just the air kind of feels like smells and feels a bit different. And yeah, the whole environment is way different. From Quinton, I think I can learn how to be more diligent with my dribbling and how to um, see more open lanes that I can use for layups. Something I could teach Quinton is I guess how to like 
score more layups or get through and get get through big people that are my size and to get around them. Well, I could learn like how to big man kids my own size and age because he could teach me moves that he knows as a um, pretty big guy for his age and that would just help for me. I could teach him a lot in defense and ball handling because those are his two biggest weaknesses that I know of and I just see how he struggles with them. Working with Remy, it's sometimes it's frustrating and hard, but eventually he gives gives it gives it to me one way, and then I use that way, and then it becomes easier. Growing up with my brother being adopted is is going pretty well, though. I'd say that we've adjusted to everything here and um, attend to keep adjusting and getting better at basketball. I'm improving so much, like. The amount of shots I'm making now is like just amazing because before, like at the first day of our training, I remember I probably I made around three out of ten, and now I'm making around seven out of ten every time I do my form shooting. The biggest difference between doing drills with Remy and in a game is like in a game, there's like way more pressure, and like usually in a game when I miss a few shots, my coach I can just see how mad he is, and it makes me like back down. But in the drills, Remy actually um, encourages me to shoot more. Spinning. <laughs> Weight brush. Well, I try to give them a mix to see how kids respond to pressure, you know what I mean? To intense behavior, to when someone's in your face, right? I try to test them, give them a taste of little things because in the game, there's so much emotions that happen. So I've noticed with my coaching style, the approach that I had to take is not always be so serious. You have to add the fun part and sometimes just be quiet. Don't say nothing. Just let it happen because I feel like a lot of coaches, they always, maybe they're like annoying chihuahua. They're just barking in the kid's ear and the kid's obviously not responding to that behavior because you can see his composure. You just have to be more patient. So in terms of my coaching style, I've always learned just to be a little bit more patient. So when I think I'm that patient, I try to be even more patient because it will come, but it doesn't come within a day. One thing I learned recently about myself, hmm. To be honest, it's more of like a reminder of what I already know. It's more of just that constant reminder of uh, practice what you keep preaching, do what you say you're gonna do, and get it done. So the same way how I tell kids, yo, you need to get your work done, I try to be more on top of what I need to do to get my work done. In terms of what separates me from all the other coaches is that I'm teaching the kids life skills and life lessons that happen to stick with them, not for a season, but for as long as they keep growing in any direction they go to, in any field they put themselves into, they can utilize the tools and the fundamentals that they learn through fitness and basketball practices into what they really want to become. Because I feel like with my program, I, if a kid doesn't know passion, I show them what passion is. I get, they can actually see it, they can actually feel it, because at the end of the day, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I don't just do it just because, oh yeah, there are a bunch of kids. No, I believe the kids are our future. I don't want any kid feeling stuck. I want them understanding, you know what? Anytime a challenge comes in my way, I'm gonna say, try me, not why me. I want them to stay confident. I want always for them to raise their self-esteem, life skills, and attitudes throughout their whole life. The reason why I created Heart of Toronto is because I actually thought where well, your vision is measured by your heart. And I feel like any kid's vision is measured by the heart that he's willing to put forward. So as long as I coach, I mean, instruct and train these kids, I'll always show them no matter who they're being coached by, you have the opportunity to be the best version of yourself. So do what the coach asks you to do, but go beyond those limits. Don't limit yourself. Because at the end of the day, I don't feel like any kid should be labeled as a role player and one kid as a superstar. They have to know it's all for one, one for all. Because why? We're all in this together. So rap, you know what I mean? Shoot. That's how we do this. How to Toronto, baby. Try to be spinning. <laughs> Where I'm gonna be, you see me on the widescreen. You 
can see I'm a star in the movie where I'm gonna be living high in the sky so fly chilling with my homies where I'm gonna be